Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 30th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Aki. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Gordenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Thank you. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose, Rosenthal, Aki, Salamanca, Torres, Traeger, Ulrich, here, Valone, here, Van Bramer, Jaeger. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pendit Narain, the spiritual leader of the Sri Trimurti Bhavan Temple, located at 101 18 97th Avenue in Ozone Park, Queens. Please rise. Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat O all merciful Lord, who art benevolent and compassionate, omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, thy splendor is as effulgent as the thousands of suns put together. May that brilliance of thine illumine our hearts and intellect and guide us in the right direction. Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunatu, Sahaviryam Karavavahe, Tejasvina Vadhi Tamastu, Mavid Bishavahe. O all merciful God, may you protect and inspire us all. May you nourish us together. May we work together with great energy. May our resolve be effective. May there be no hostility amongst us. Om peace, peace, peace. Om Sarvesham Swastira Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantira Bhavatu. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalang Bhavatu. 
Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be well-being in all. May there be peace in all. May there be fulfillment in all. May there be auspiciousness in all. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to ask Councilmember Adams to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I would like to thank Pandit Chunalal Narin for being here today. He is a visionary who has initiated a campaign to revitalize Hinduism and promote humanitarian work all over the world. He is the founder and officiating priest of the Sri Trumarti Bhavan Incorporated, a Hindu temple in Queens where hundreds of devotees worship on a weekly basis. He was selected to receive the Universal Peace Federation's Ambassador of Peace Award, an esteemed honor confirmed upon distinguished individuals who accept the responsibility to promote peace in communities all over the world. He has also been the recipient of several city council citations and the Guyana Tri-State Alliance Golden Arrowhead of Achievement. Pandit Narin was able to organize and execute the first ever South African Hindu Youth Convention, an event that involved hundreds of youth and is expanding year after year in South Africa, in addition to other humanitarian and philanthropic work in the African continent. Spreading the word of God, counseling the disheartened, uplifting the spirit of the less fortunate and serving selflessly whenever and wherever duty calls is the mission of Pandit Shunalal Narin. I now make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Council Member Adams, and thank you so much for that beautiful invocation. Thank you so very much. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Richards. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of September 25th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Thank you. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M193. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. At this time, I'll ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's land use call-up calendar. We are just voting now on the land use call-up calendar. Adams? Aye. Ampri Samuel? Aye. Ayala? Aye. Barron? Aye. Borelli? Aye. Brannon? Aye. Cabrera? Aye. Chin? Aye. Cohen? Constantinidis? Aye. Carnegie? Aye. Deutsch? Diaz? Drum? Aye. Espinal? Aye. Eugene? I vote aye. Gibson? Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. I vote aye. Thank you. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. With uh, permission, I'd like to uh, explain my vote on the land use call-ups and coupled items of uh, general order. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say that, I'm sorry, yes, putting this, oh, yes, thank you. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose, Rosenthal, Aye. Salamanca, Aye. Torres, 
Traeger. Ulrich. Aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here today for this very important stated meeting. I want to begin by acknowledging that yesterday was the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Sandy, a tragedy where we lost so many New Yorkers seven years ago, and still parts of this city have not fully recovered. So today, as we remember those who we lost, we must also remember our communities are still recovering, and there's still so much more work that we must do to ensure safety and resiliency. Communities in Staten Island and in Coney Island and at NYCHA developments all across our city, and as we mark this anniversary, must recommit ourselves to do all we can to help those communities. I also want to wish those who are celebrating a very happy Diwali. Diwali is also known as the Festival of Lights, and it lasts for five days, and it marks the start of the Hindu New Year. And as we do at every stated, I want to also recognize some of the important events that have happened recently in our city. Sadly, we lost an NYPD detective. Dennis Murphy died due to 9-11 related illnesses. Detective Murphy was an advocate for the 9-11 Victims' Compensation Fund, and he tirelessly campaigned to ensure that all survivors received the treatment they so badly needed. He was 57 years old, and I'm glad that he was able to see the Victims' Compensation Fund be enacted before he died. We also lost a former firefighter and Uniform Firefighters Association President, James Boyle. Jimmy, as he was known, tragically lost his son in the 9-11 attacks, which took so many of our fellow New Yorkers' lives. We will never stop being grateful for Jimmy's many contributions to our city. He was 80 years old. I'm sad to say today we also have lost two New Yorkers who died while on their jobs. Stanislav Supinski, a construction worker, died on the Lower East Side he was 52 years old, and he died on October 21st. The city's Department of Transportation also lost a member of their family. Eduardo Calle Abrio was killed. He was 44 years old, and he died on the Upper East Side during a repaving project on October 22nd. For all of those that we've lost, I'd like to take a moment of silence so if everyone could rise for us to remember these New Yorkers. If someone could please silence their device upstairs. Thank you. Uh, moving into our agenda, out of the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on introduction 1750 to authorize six business improvement districts across the city to increase the amount that they are authorized to assess. We will also vote on the following property tax exemptions. Knickerbocker Village in Councilmember Margaret Chin's district, Strivers Plaza in Councilmember Bill Perkins's district, and St. Nicholas Manor Apartments in Councilmember Perkins's district. Moving on, the council will be voting on the following pieces of legislation. First, introduction 1541B, sponsored by myself, would create a specialized high school task force that would be charged with addressing the racial and ethnic student body inequities of specialized high schools in our city. I am proud of this bill. We are the most diverse city in the country, but our specialized high schools do not reflect that. It is disgraceful and something that all of us should be working to address. This bill 
does that with the task force made up of appointees from the speaker and the mayor, and it would be required to examine three things. First, the current admission system, including the specialized high school admissions exam and whether such exams should be changed or eliminated. Number two, existing programs, such as the Department of Education's Discovery and Dream programs. And three, the use of alternative admissions methods, including state standardized admissions and grade point average. I also want to recognize and thank the chair of our education committee, Mark Traeger, for his partnership, his leadership, him educating me throughout this process on how important this is, and I'm grateful for the hearing that he had on this. I also want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malcolm Butehorn, Jan Atwell, and Kalima Johnson. Next, the council will be voting on uh, a lot of bills, a lot of bills and resolutions that will strengthen our existing animal welfare laws here in New York City. Over the last decade, New York City has proven itself to be one of the most progressive cities in our country across the board, but there is more to do on animal welfare. And I am happy we're advancing these bills so that we can stay that way for decades to come. The first is pre-considered resolution 977, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Holden, which calls on the United States Congress and the President to sign the House and Senate bills that are the Preventing Animal Cruelty Torture Act, otherwise known as the PACT Act. Next, Resolution 921, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, would call on the New York State Legislature to pass and the Governor to sign the Assembly and Senate bills which would provide a tax cut to each tax credit to each taxpayer who adopts a household pet from a shelter. My cat, Moose, is six years old and I adopted him from a shelter uh, a little more than four years ago. I would encourage everyone to do that. Adopt, don't shop. Uh, resolution 379, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, would call for the recognition of meatless Mondays in New York City. Introduction 1570A, sponsored by our health committee chair who oversaw all these bills getting through committee. He did a great job. Uh, chair Mark Levine would ensure that dogs entering kennels, businesses, or establishments need to be in compliance with the New York City Health Code, which requires that dogs be vaccinated for Bordetella kennel cough. Next, introduction 1498A, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, would require the New York City Police Department to publish semi-annual public reports on complaints and investigations of animal cruelty allegations. Specifically, the department would report on the number of animal cruelty complaints it received and arrests that happened. Next, introduction 870A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, would require any full-service animal shelter operated in New York City to post photographs of each adoptable animal within three days of receiving such animal, provided that the animal is medically and behaviorally well enough. It would also require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to encourage non-full-service animal shelters to promote the placement of adoptable animals. Next, Resolution 798, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannon, would call on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign the Assembly and Senate bills, which would amend the Agriculture and Markets Law and the General Business Law in relation of the sale of cats, dogs, and rabbits, just to make sure that we should only be selling uh, shelter animals in pet stores. That's what we should be doing. Introduction 1478A also sponsored by Councilmember Brannon, would establish the Office of Animal Welfare headed by a director appointed by the mayor. The office would be vested with the power to advise and assist the mayor in the coordination and cooperation between agencies relating to animal welfare administration, regulation, management, and programs. They would also be charged with reviewing and recommending budget priorities relating to animal welfare, preparing an annual animal welfare report, and serving as a liaison for the city regarding animal welfare. Finally, the office would provide outreach and education on animal welfare programs and humane treatment of animals and perform other duties the, mayors may assign, the mayor may assign to uh, help keep animals safe. Introduction 1425A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, would prohibit carriage horses from being worked when the air temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or above, or whenever the air temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit or above, and the equine heat index is 150 or above. 
Uh, and we have two final pieces of legislation regarding animal welfare, both by Councilmember Carlina Rivera. Introduction 1378 would prohibit retail food establishments or restaurants from storing, maintaining, selling, or offering to sell forced-fed products or food containing a forced-fed product. This bill uh, creates a rebuttable presumption that any item with a label or that's listed on the menu as foie gras is the product of force feeding. Violators would be subject to a civil penalty between $500 and $2,000 per offense. And the next bill by Councilman Rivera, introduction 1202A, would prohibit non-exempt individuals from taking or attempting to take any wild bird. Exempt individuals include law enforcement employees or other city employees acting in the scope of their duties, a person authorized by law or permit, or a person attempting to rescue a wild bird. A shout out to the Wild Bird Fund, one of the best groups in New York City that save wild birds. And any person who unlawfully takes a wild bird is subject to a misdemeanor and a fine of no more than $1,000. This is because people are illegally trapping wild birds, bringing them to Pennsylvania or other places, and using them to kill uh, for shooting practice or for sport. Uh, I want to thank the incredible staff who worked hard on this, Z Emanuel Halu, uh, Sarah Liss, Emily Balkin, Andrea Vasquez, and Smita Deshmukh. I really want to thank you. This is an historic day for animals in the New York City Council, a big, important day. And I'm really grateful for the leadership that each member here has shown in saying that we want to be a city that is judged, of course, about how we treat our fellow people, but also we want to be judged by how we treat animals and the evolution of how we come to care for animals and how uh, we want to be at the forefront of protecting animals in New York City. So I am very proud. I said earlier at the pre-stated press conference, I never thought I'd be involved in politics. My first job is I worked on a farm. I took care of llamas and miniature donkeys and horses and 30 or 40 Dalmatians. Uh, and I wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh, so I am really proud of this package of bills that we are doing today. Next up, we have a series of bills aimed at transforming and regulating the commercial waste industry in New York City. This package includes legislation to regulate private carding companies, including introduction 1574A, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, which authorizes the creation of commercial waste zones. For too long, the private carding industry has been able to operate without adequate safeguards to ensure air quality and street safety. Private carters have customers throughout the city, resulting in long, inefficient routes and millions of excess truck miles driven every year. Waste hauling vehicles are needlessly driving through our communities, increasing air pollution that negatively impacts public health and that emits greenhouse gas emissions that contributes to the climate crisis and emergency that our city, country, and world is facing. The creation of commercial waste zones will result in shorter, more efficient routes, eliminating more than 18 million miles of truck, tra truck traffic from New York City streets. Not only will this dramatically reduce the environmental harms of this industry, but drivers will no longer be incentivized to drive unsafely to complete their routes. Drivers can go slower and they can be more alert. And the workers who work for these companies and the public will be safer. This reform will also incentivize better recycling practices, increased organics processing, and a transition to zero emission vehicles. We have worked diligently to engage with stakeholders throughout this process, and we have created an ambitious and achievable package of reform that will overhaul how we uh, dispose of commercial waste in New York City. Today, I am proud, very proud, that we are making our air cleaner, our streets safer, and providing businesses throughout the city more transparent pricing and better services. I'm gonna tick through some of the bills. The first are two by Councilmember Salamanca, introduction 1082A will require GPS devices on waste hauling vehicles that are used to collect waste in these commercial waste zones. And another bill by Councilmember Salamanca would require a minimum fine of $1,000 and a maximum fine of $10,000 for carding companies that receive a violation for an unreported employee. And the next two bills are by Councilmember Reynoso. The first is it would establish the commercial waste zones where the Department of Sanitation would designate commercial waste zones and enter into agreements with up to three private carters to operate in each zone. And his other bill is introduction 1573A, 
uh, which would add enforcement of environmental safety health standards to the powers and duties of the Business Integrity Commission, uh, BIC. This clear statement of BIC's authority to act on unsafe practices in this industry would allow the agency to consider a business's practices more broadly upon license renewal. I want to congratulate Councilmember Salamanca, but I specifically want to single out Councilmember Reynoso, and you're going to hear from him uh, in a few moments, and I would ask uh, Madam Majority Leader that when Councilmember Reynoso uh, speaks, I'm happy to give him speaker time uh, so that he's not limited by two minutes uh, because uh, he has worked so hard on this uh, bill today. Uh, a little more than a year ago, we passed a historic package of bills on waste transfer stations, bills that had languished in this council for more than a decade. And Councilmember Reynoso had worked on those bills when he was chief of staff to Councilmember Diana Reyna, came into this council and pushed for those bills because his district in North Brooklyn was getting 40% of the sanitation in New York City being dumped in his district. And we know that Southeast Queens and the South Bronx were similarly suffering. Councilman Reynoso has worked diligently, thoughtfully, unbelievably hard from when we passed that bill a year and a half ago to today. He has literally been working nonstop. He has chaired the sanitation committee for the last six years. I am so proud of the work that he has done on this bill. He has been thoughtful, he has engaged with stakeholders, there wasn't total agreement on what we had to do, but I think he handled this responsibly and showed a tremendous amount of leadership and he got into the weeds on what this meant. We had the pre-stated press conference, he was answering the questions in such a thoughtful, granular way. I am so incredibly uh, proud of him. Uh, and so I want to congratulate him, Council Member Reynoso, and I want to thank the staff who worked on this. A lot of staff worked on this, but specifically Nicola Ben and Nadia Johnson were here nights, weekends, time and again, had dozens and dozens of meetings. So I want to thank you, Nicole, and, is, and I want to thank you, Nadia, uh, for your incredible hard work uh, on this bill. Okay, finally, today the Council will be voting on My Street's Master Plan legislation. I want to thank each and every council member and staff member who has been involved in this process, and I want to thank the advocates who have helped push this into the forefront of our city over the last few years. I want to thank Families for Safe Streets, who I think are here. Yes, they are standing up, these heroes. I want to thank them. Let's give them a round of applause for the work they do to make our city a safe place. I want to thank the Riders Alliance, Transportation Alternatives, Bikes, New Bike New York, and Streets Pack. We have lost too many people in our city this year, last year, the year before, five years before that, ten years before that, because of traffic violence and because our streets have not been planned properly for all people that need to use them. Our streets were built and were readapted when cars were new. And since that time, we have made improvements in a piecemeal fashion, and some of those improvements have been really important and really great, and I'm grateful for the Vision Zero commitment that the administration has made. But we must go farther. We have a record number of cyclists who have been killed this year, and there has been vast reporting on that. But what hasn't been reported in the same way is that pedestrian fatalities are up 30% this year. Almost every day, every two hours in New York City, someone is either seriously injured or harmed crossing the street or killed crossing the street in New York City. It does not have to be this way. And this is not rocket science. Other cities around the world, other cities around the United States, have reimagined their streets, have revolutionized their streets to say that of the 8.6 million people who live in New York City, less than a million and a half own cars, but 7 million people in New York City do not own cars. And we have to make sure that our streets work for everyone. Mass transit users who are stuck on a bus, a cyclist who is obeying the rules of the road and gets hit or killed a pedestrian who has the walk signal but gets seriously harmed or injured. Anyone 
who questions the importance of us taking this step, sit and talk with any of the unbelievably heroic and brave family members that are in this balcony today, that have lost a child, that have lost a spouse, that have lost a loved one. Listen to their pain and grief that is unimaginable. And so many of these fatalities and injuries are entirely preventable. They are preventable by changing the way we plan our streets. They are preventable by showing that we are not going to prioritize cars to be the most important thing. Cars will exist in New York City, but it's about rebalancing things to make sure that people remain safe. Today I want to talk about one of those people that we lost, and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of stories that you could hear, but today I want to talk about one. Seth Kahn was 22 years old when he was hit by an MTA bus in Hell's Kitchen in my district in 2009, almost 10 years ago to the day. His father, Harold Kahn, who is here today, his mother, Debbie Kahn, who's here today, they spoke movingly yesterday about the importance of this bill. Harold described his only child as a, quote, joy to be around, who was handsome, kind, generous, loving, creative, and talented. And 10 years after Seth's tragic death, Harold said, of course, that he and his wife miss hearing their son's stories, and they are heartbroken that they will never be grandparents. When we vote on this bill today, I'd like us to remember the reason why safe streets are so necessary. This could happen to any one of us. This could happen to any one of our friends and family members. And this is why bold action is needed. I am proud of this bill, but there is so much more work that we must do to continue to have safe streets in New York City. We should not stand by and think, oh, some pedestrians are going to get killed this year. Oh, some cyclists are going to get killed this year. It doesn't have to be this way. We've seen in a short period of time with improvements on Queens Boulevard and improvements in Times Square and improvements in neighborhoods across New York City, that those improvements have saved lives, but they have been done in a piecemeal way. It is time to have a master plan that fits together, that makes sense for mass transit users, cyclists, pedestrians. We are in the midst of a climate emergency in this world. 83% of transportation emissions come from private automobiles. 83%. So this is not just about safety. It's about the environmental disaster that is waiting for us and making it safe to use other modes of transportation. I am incredibly proud of this bill. I think it sets us on a path for a better future in New York City. And this plan's goals will be to prioritize the safety of all street users, the use of mass transit, the reduction of vehicle emissions, and also importantly, to create access for individuals with disabilities who can't navigate our streets or our sidewalks because they're not built appropriately. Each plan that this bill would ensure would include benchmarks, not goals, but benchmarks. And the first plan would be due in December of 2021. This bill requires reporting in February of each year regarding any update on any changes to the master plan and progress towards achieving those benchmarks laid out in the plan. The New York City Department of Transportation would also be required to conduct a public education campaign on the benefits of each master plan. And I just want to end with this. I want to end with this. There has been a significant amount of pushback to this bill. There has been people saying, you're villainizing people that must take their car across New York City. That is not what we are saying here today. We are saying that the streets must be built for everyone. We are saying that to be a 22nd century city, we have to change the way we do things. 
We are not penalizing anyone. We are making our streets safer. And when you make our streets safer, when you get buses moving, when you make it safer for pedestrians, you are actually making it safer for everyone. Because even people who use their private automobiles to get from a transit desert in New York City to into Manhattan, even those people cross the street at night with their child in New York City. Even those people walk to the grocery store. Even those people are people that have friends and family members and children that could be exposed to traffic violence through inaction. So this is not mutually exclusive. This is not a zero-sum game. This is about us saving countless future lives in the greatest city in the world. We are far behind other world-class cities that are doing this. We know that it works. It is the right thing to do. I announced this as part of my State of the City in March, and I want to thank Rob Newman and Kelly Taylor, who have worked tirelessly on this since that day. They have been agile, they have been smart, they have been comprehensive, they worked with all the advocates, and I am incredibly grateful to them, and I'm also grateful to James DiGiovanni, who is the Council of the Transportation Committee, and lastly, I want to thank Adonis Rodriguez, the Chair of the Transportation Committee. He's been the Chair of the Committee for six years, and every time someone says, you can't go this far, Adonis pushes the envelope. Adonis shows leadership on these issues. I am, in, I am grateful for him hearing this bill and for him working on this. And when there are not cameras there, Adonis shows up to be with family members who have lost a loved one to traffic violence. So I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, for your leadership. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, before uh, we go into uh, general order time, I would like to give Councilmember Reynoso to start off uh, speaker time so that he has enough time to make remarks on the commercial waste zone plan. Yes, granted. You may begin, Councilmember Reynoso. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. I want to start by saying that during my second term in office, I sat with uh, the Speaker and he asked me what was important to me and for me. And I told them that waste equity, um, justice for communities like South Bronx, North Brooklyn, Southeast Queens, those are things that were important to me. And he ended the meeting by saying, Antonio, if it's important to you, it's important to me. He then signed on to both bills, uh, even though they were put together conceptually, because he had faith in the work that I was gonna be able to do to get us to a point where we're working um, and trying to satisfy so many people and so many groups, but ultimately we're forming an industry that um, for too long has gone um, without proper oversight or regulation. Today truly is a victory for the city of New York. The reforms to the private sanitation industry that we will be voting on today will improve the lives of every resident of this city. Our air will be cleaner, our streets will be safer, workers will be protected, and businesses will have reliable waste collection services. Many people told me today would never happen, that the system was too complex to be meaningfully reformed, that the politics were too difficult. And until today, history had proven those naysayers right. However, I knew that we had justice on our side, that ours was the righteous cause. We persisted for six straight years to reach today's vote, and I am gratified to say to you today that the righteous cause has prevailed. For years, carters have chased customers all over the city, resulting in routes with hundreds and hundreds of stops, and in some cases, thousands of stops, dozens of carters serving a single commercial corridor. This puts pressure on drivers and helpers to cut corners in order to complete their routes in a single night. Workers have to blow red lights, speed, and run across dark streets into oncoming traffic, putting themselves and the public in danger. This is not their fault, but a consequence of terrible operational practices imposed by company owners. These companies run old trucks that lack basic safety inspections and spew dirty emissions. Those emissions are further increased by inefficient routes, leaving communities like mine to suffer with high rates of asthma and other respiratory illnesses. And to top all of this, carters are not recycling, sending more waste to landfill, to landfill, adding additional methane emissions to the system at a time when we are facing a climate emergency. A commercial waste zone system will put an end to all of this. There are so many people who made this legislation possible and I'm going to do my very best to thank them all. But before then, I just wanna say, um, as a young boy, 
growing up in North Brooklyn, uh, across the street from a super fun site, a brownfield area, opportunity area, um, called the Newtown Creek, uh, a highway put there by Robert Moses that split my community in half. They built parks on either side of the highway, and almost exclusively that is where our young people play. We have three times the asthma entrance running into Woodhull Hospital than the average of the city of New York. When I set out to become a council member, I promised that I was going to affect the meaningful change for the people in my district. But I also set out to be a sanitation chair that wanted to affect change for the city of New York in a meaningful way. And today I feel um, that my mission and being able to look back, if I could, at the young boy in the South Side that I did right by him and I did right by my community and the young people in the future of my district. This legislation wasn't done alone. It was also waste equity, reducing capacity in my district by 50%, not allowing for 40% of the trash to go to one location. So I want to again thank Speaker Corey Johnson, whose courageous leadership on this issue broke the logjam that held, up this for so, held this up for so many years. I want to thank the SNY Commissioner Captain Garcia, who knew this was the right thing to do and put the weight of the department behind this effort. Her staff, Justin Bland, Christine Billy, Greg Anderson, who are valuable partners in drafting this legislation. Our incredible legislative committee staff, Nicole Ben, Nadia Johnson, John Seltzer, Megan Chen, Brad Reed, Terza Nasser, and Jeff Baker, who worked tirelessly on this deeply complex 60-page bill. I want to thank my legislative director, Asher Freeman, who helped write these comments and would never put his name on them, but I just want to say to Asher Freeman, thank you so much for the tireless work that you put in this legislation as well. The entire Transform Don't Trash Coalition, the Teamsters, New York Lawyers for Public Interest, NIJA, NRDC, and Align, your steadfast advocacy woke the city up to this problem and spurred elected leadership in the city to do something about it. I have to send a big thank you to my own hometown crew, Outrage, who have been in the front lines of environmental justice fight in North Brooklyn for years. And finally, I want to thank the journalists who covered this industry and the efforts to reform it. We as elected officials cannot do what we do without the press and a time when they are coming under attack. I want to thank, take a moment to recognize the incredibly important work that they do. This bill, first and foremost, is about environmental justice. But I want to close by speaking about the people who feel the impacts of this industry most acutely. On April 3rd, 1968, 51, year old, 51 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King delivered the last speech he would ever give on behalf of striking sanitation workers in Memphis, where he uttered the fateful words, I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as people, will get to the promised land. The bill we are voting today delivers on the promise of Dr. Martin Luther King, made to those workers so many decades ago. Workers like Mark Diallo, who lost his life doing the job that so many like him, vulnerable members of, of our society, folks who have had contact with the justice system, undocumented folks, who do this job night in and night out. I am proud to be able to say to those workers that justice will no longer be delayed. I am proud that today we can deliver on a small piece of Dr. King's dream. And thank you all. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilmember Reynoso. Great job. And Madam Majority Leader, this concludes speaker's time. I turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move on to any members that are wishing to discuss the bills being voted on today. And we will first begin prior to doing that with Council Members Moya, followed by Council Member Reverend Diaz. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I will be voting yes on all except uh, 157.4a and 1425a. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Member Reverend Diaz. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. I just want to vote yes on all the agenda for the LAMP News Committee and voting on the introduction 1574a and 15, 1557a. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And we will now begin general orders, starting with Council Member Cabrera, followed by Council Member Cornegy, and followed by Council Member Borelli. And just a reminder that we are speaking only on the bills that are being voted on at this time. Thank you so much. And I'll make a real brief uh, intro 1498A will require NYPD to report 
data regarding animal cruelty complaints on its website on a semi-annual semi basis, no later than January 30th and July 30th of each year beginning in 2020. The data would include the number of complaint reports alleging an act of animal cruelty and the number of animals cru cruelty arrests by precinct. Animal, animal abuse is part of the cycle of violence intentional animal cruelty has shown to correlate with all the crimes, including violence against people. We know that women who enter domestic violence shelters often report that their partners hurt or kill the family pet. We also know that hoarding behavior causes animals to suffer extreme neglect and can indicate that the animal hoarder needs social or mental health services. Preventing and adequately uh, punishing animal cruelty helps and the cycle of violence to both animals and humans. I want to thank the speaker. I want to thank the chair, Mark Levine, the council staff. But I also want to give a special thanks uh, in regards to this bill to Ali Feldman Taylor. I know you're listening right now. I know you're here. I want to thank you because you inspire me to introduce this bill. And today shall come to pass. Today's a good day for animal. And I want to congratulate also all of the sponsors of all the animal rights bills. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we will hear from Council Member Cornegy. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to first start by uh, congratulating my colleague Antonio Reynoso on the tremendous amount of work he put on this bill, but I want to respectfully disagree with 1574. The bill to create, to create commercial waste zones is opposed by many in the business and labor community and without a doubt will kill jobs. While I agree with my colleagues and advocates that industry should be reformed to be better, I believe we can achieve that goal with more targeted and less harmful policies. I understand that we are in a climate emergency and that City Council feels the need to do everything to address this crisis, but our city needs nuanced and flexible leadership. Being progressive should not mean anti-business. City Council should not be regulating jobs and opportunity out of existence, especially for our city's most vulnerable workers. The commercial waste industry was significantly reformed in the 1990s to eliminate corruption and create a truly competitive market. This bill will possibly create monopolies, which in turn reduces accountability and increases prices. Additionally, my other two primary concerns with the bill is the reduction of low barrier to entry jobs, especially for individuals who have been involved with the criminal justice system and without a high school degree, and increased costs for small business and increased burden on business in general. These are good paying jobs that City Council is eager to snatch away from the hardworking New Yorkers. The impetus for intro 1574 is to make our streets safer by reducing truck traffic and improving the environment. There's a narrative that haulers are crisscrossing the city in a desperate effort to get business. Sure, there are bad actors in the market that lowball prices and do not abide by safety norms and regulations, but creating commercial waste zones is not the targeted policy solution we need to solve these issues. If we want to get bad actors off the road, let's push the, big, let's push the Business Integrity Commission to implement minimum pricing, which it already has the authority to do. Setting a, price for floor, setting a price floor ensures that union jobs and laborers are protected against unfair and unscrupulous competition and our streets become safer. Additionally, the industry has already been making progress on increasing safety training and practices, reducing its environmental impact. I often hear in the council that we need a holistic approach to solving the housing crisis, that we need to ensure people have good paying jobs to pay for rents and mortgage, which is why many members are supporting a prevailing wage for service and construction workers in the development of affordable and supportive housing projects. How does stripping union jobs make housing more accessible and secure? Thank you, Council Member Cornegy. I just want to finish by saying I cannot support Intro 1574 or the creation of commercial waste zones. This is an answer to search. This is an answer in search of a problem. The solution of the, to the problem before us today can and ought to be addressed by, through more targeted and less harmful public policies. Thank the you, Council Member The people of New York Carnegie. are counting on Council to expand opportunity workers and are, are not dis opportunity workers are not disposable and businesses are not piggy banks. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now hear from Council Member Richie Torres. I would like to vote on all general items. I vote aye on all. Permission granted. Thank you. We'll now call on Councilmember Borelli, followed by Councilmember Rivera. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I'm speaking out today against a bill that I was once actually a sponsor of. Uh, and after going through the hearing process, uh, I've decided that I no longer support and I actually oppose. 
Um, today we'll be forming a task force to reevaluate an exam uh, and essentially we'll be providing cover for the fact that a significant fraction of our city's public middle schools are unable to produce students that can pass any sort of standardized testing or objective measures. And I have a, a DOE quality snapshot here on my desk as an example. A school with 300 students, let's call it School X. It's a school that doesn't produce the quality students who could pass the test. The DOE tells us that schools like this have the second highest rating for student achievement. They're telling us the school has the highest level of rigorous instruction. They're telling us the school has the highest rating of teachers. They tell us that 87% of kids pass their classes and 88% of kids in this school, School X, are next level ready. It's on, it's on paper, it's online. But when the DOE has any other measure outside of their control, we see a school of failure. In this particular school, only 18% of kids can pass state English exams and 16% can pass math, both below city and state averages. And I've asked DOE to explain this multiple times, and they've always refused and given blank stares. Now, unsurprisingly, when these students go on to high school, they're not going to make the elite high schools. But even the schools we can track, they go on to schools that have low graduation rates, low SAT scores, low regents passing rates. And there's dozens of middle schools like this school I have as an example. You just have to go online and look. So instead of having a task force that might hopefully at best pull two or three of the kids from this school and put them in an elite high school, I think it's better that we have a task force to examine in all candor why we have so many schools where DOE is telling us everything is a-okay but where students can't pass any objective standards. I would urge all of my colleagues uh, to, to not support 1541 and hopefully go back to the drawing board at some point uh, to get a task force to examine middle school failure. Thank you, Councilmember Borelli. We'll now be followed by Councilmember Rivera, Lander, and Levin. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to speak on two pieces of legislation being voted on today that I am proud to be the lead sponsor of. These two bills are part of a historic package the Council is considering today to advance animal rights across a number of different industries and areas. We are voting on these bills over 150 years after New York State became the first state in the nation to pass an animal cruelty law. And I hope we will continue that proud tradition today of advancing animal rights. My legislation to prohibit the sale of force-fed foie gras will finally put an end to one of the cruelest and most inhumane practices in the food industry. No longer will these animals suffer from the diseases, ruptured organs, esophagus trauma, broken bones, and illnesses that come as a result of violently forcing birds to eat more grain in weeks than they would normally consume in their lifetime. The method itself is abusive and it's unnecessary, and many countries and cities in the globe have enacted their own ban, and I'm excited the five boroughs are joining them. At the same time, we've heard from stakeholders regarding the effects of this bill, and that's why the legislation we are passing today includes a phase in period for any impacted businesses so that they might work to change production approaches to shift some of their focus to other established and lucrative markets. My other bill, intro 1202, will target illegal acts uh, long observed by constituents in my district and others where poachers forcefully captured pigeons and other birds from our streets and bring them illegally to other states where they are kept in terrible conditions until they are shot for sport. This bill will give our animal abuse officers in the NYPD the ability to capture these traffickers and prosecute this disturbing criminal behavior. We wouldn't be here passing this legislation without the work of so many committed advocates and council staff. I have to thank uh, Chief of Staff Jason Goldman, our committee council, Zay Emanuel Halu and Sarah Liss, Senior Policy Analyst Emily Balkin, our Legislative Council Nicholas Connell, of course, Voters for Animal Rights, the Humane Society Veterinarian Medical Association, the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Thank you, Fund, Council Member Rivera. And of course, my Legislative Director, Jeremy Unger. It's a big day for animals, and we should continue to be at the forefront of the movement. I hope you all will join me in supporting these bills. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. We'll now be joined by Council Member Lander, Levin, Rodriguez and Ulrich. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. There are so many good bills on the calendar today, and when I vote, I'll speak about the comprehensive streets planning bill. Speaker Johnson, it is a, a really great step forward for saving lives in our city, and 
congratulations to Council Members Rivera and Brannon and so many others. But I want to speak for a minute now in support of 1574. Um, there are th some really big issues facing the challenges in the city right now. We've got an environmental crisis that falls hardest on low-income communities of color. We've got an income inequality and workers' rights crisis, which falls hardest on workers of color. And we've got a safe streets crisis, which actually falls hardest on every community. I am not aware of any other piece of legislation that does something about all three of those things besides 1574. For too long, we have allowed private sanitation to flaunt all those things, to drive all over the city, to not attend to reducing waste, to cause the most harm in communities of color, to put low-income workers of color's lives at risk, and put pedestrians' lives at risk without adequate regulation or attention. And this 1574A is a result of a lot of years of hard work and planning and remarkable organizing makes smart steps on all of them. Uh, this is a smart bill. It's not anti-business. There'll still be competition. It just will be competition amongst businesses, all of whom are required to have sane routes, to observe safety standards, and to pay attention to environmental and recycling requirements. Um, I was honored to be the original sponsor of this bill, but when Councilmember Reynoso came into this body and made clear he wanted to step up to the leadership of the Sanitation Committee to do right by his constituents and by our whole city, I recognize that that thing we say when we want the people who are closest to the problem to be in the lead in making the solution, that this remarkable coalition that has so many people in the balcony from environmental justice, from environmental groups, from labor, from safe streets, had the right champion in Councilmember Reynoso. Reynoso, Antonio, you've done the body proud, your community proud, and this coalition proud. Congratulations. Thank you. Councilmember Levin, followed by Councilmember Rodriguez and Ulrich. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I also want to speak on uh, intro 1574 um, and um, thank and acknowledge Antonio Reynoso for his leadership on this bill. Um, this took a lot of um, political, professional, and personal courage to put this bill forward and, um, and put in the hard work with his staff um, and the committee staff to, um, to get this bill done. And I want to obviously acknowledge all the advocates um, uh, that have been there as well, and they've done an incredible job. Um, you know, as we've learned in recent years, there, the, the current state of affairs with the private carding industry uh, is in such desperate need of reform. Um, a single route for a shift for a private hauler um, could include hundreds and hundreds of pickups in a single shift. That means that um, they will be picking up in an eight-hour shift. It could be every 30 seconds or every minute that they have to do a pickup in order to get home to their families. That, that condition contributes so greatly to what we see on our streets, which is speeding trucks, um, trucks going through red lights, making reckless turns, backing up down the wrong, backing up down streets, going the wrong way down one-way streets, when we see that, the, the practice in business right now is contributing to that. And it is putting New Yorkers at risk every single day. And we see it be, by the number of, of people that have been killed by private hauling trucks, which far outpaces the number of people that are killed by DSNY trucks. Um, this is a bill that will have more impact on reducing truck traffic on our streets than any other piece of legislation that I will have voted on in my entire time here at the council. And so I just want to uh, encourage my colleagues to vote yes on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. We'll now hear from Council Member Rodriguez, followed by Ulrich, Menchaca, and Deutsch. Thank you, Majority Leader. First of all, thank you, Council Member Reynoso. There's one thing that we have in immigrants, black and Latino and Asian community which is we had a higher level of children dealing with asthma. And I feel that the organization or the industry, the way of how we pick up is so important. And I feel that you know this is about social justice. And that's only one step that we have to make in order to be sure that you know we take away so many trucks from places from the South Bronx, from Washington Heights, 
other places in Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island. We need to be sure that we, you know, protect our children. And, and then we don't have to make the numbers to have a higher percentage of asthma in New York City. Second, thank you, uh, Speaker Johnson. Uh, today is a historical day. With the transportation master plan, what we are saying is that, first of all, we listen loud and clear to all the members of the TA. Sometimes it takes decades. I know that you, when you started organizing, not many people understood the work that you were doing, a family for safe street. We will never know how to stand up every day, wake up, go to sleep without having the loved one that didn't die because, you know, they were dealing with some health issue. They just died because a responsible, and many times, criminal drivers, you know, leave the scene after hitting someone. And also, because we as a city of New York has not, doing, has not been doing the urban planning, having pedestrians and cyclists at the center of our city. So today, with this plan, it's more than a, a, a putting a bandage in a crisis that is affecting our city. What we are doing is putting the strategy together. Hoy nosotros vamos a asegurarnos de que con el plan liderado por el speaker, estamos mandando un mensaje de que en la ciudad de Nueva York vamos a poner el dinero, vamos a hacer estrategia para que la calle sea segura para todos. Thank you. Thank you. Now hear from Council Member Ulrich. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I will be voting uh, later on, uh, but I did want to speak on two of the bills today and just uh, briefly explain my vote. Uh, the first uh, is uh, my opposition to intro 1574A, the commercial uh, waste zone bill that is being passed today. I know how hard uh, Antonio Reynoso uh, worked on this particular issue, and I know how deeply he cares about it. And, um, I don't want to take away from that in any way, but I have heard from many, many, many small businesses in my district and outside of my district that are genuinely concerned about the possibility of price fixing and the monopolies that will result as a result of this bill's passage. When we create these commercial waste zones and we allow for only a certain number of uh, large carding companies to bid on these zones, they are going to, in, in a sense, be able to determine what the prices are. And don't make any mistake. Um, if they can make more profits, they will. They will squeeze out the smaller carding companies that don't have the capacity or the ability to compete with them for some of these bids. And uh, as a result of that, I think that who will suffer the most will be the small businesses that are going to be forced by the City of New York to hire one or two or maybe three companies in each commercial waste zone. That is going to put an unbelievable burden on these small businesses that are already struggling to stay in businesses. This city does not do enough to support small businessmen and women in this city who are truly the backbone of our economies. We keep passing regulations and bills that bring them to their knees, and it is no surprise that so many vacancies uh, are occurring across the city. So I think it's bad for business, and that's why I'm voting against it. Uh, I do want to express concern uh, very briefly on, uh, on 1557A, but I'll reserve that for my comments for voting because I see my time is out. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Ulrich. We'll be followed by now Councilmembers Menchaca, Deutsch, La Deutsch, Lanceman, and Powers. In 2012, Superstorm Sandy came and devastated many of our communities, and it was a wake-up call for so many of us, especially those who entered the City Council with a mission to do what we could to bring climate change and those issues to the forefront of what a municipal, a municipal government can do. One of those seeds and that promise that we carried into the council was 15, what we understand now is 1574A, and that included the incredible leadership of my brother from the north in Brooklyn, Antonio Reynoso. So much of that courage has sustained itself because of the coalition behind this work and the transformation that needs to happen to an industry that has been not just polluting and making our streets unsafe, but has led to the deaths of so many workers, immigrant workers. And so I wanna thank the speaker and all his staff for the work that they've done to ensure that this bill is a good bill, and it is. Transformation is not easy, it's hard, but it's also necessary. 
And as we think about climate change and what it forces us to do, to think different, to act differently, this is one of those bills that does that. Even the opponents of this bill tell us that, sure, there are bad actors. Well, we're saying not only do we know that they're bad actors, but we have a law to fix that. And that's why the law is the strongest way to transition us so that we can actually have a just transition for this economy of private carters. But that's not the only thing that we're voting on today. And we're also voting on animal rights bills, including foie gras and the work that we're doing to ensure that animals are protected as we move forward with an industry that can be more humane. There's nothing humane about putting um, animals through this. And so for me, this is why I'm saying yes to all the bills today. Again, Reynoso brought in a seed that grew and we all helped it grow. I wanna continue to do that as we all force ourselves to think differently, act differently, and legislate our way through it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. Again, you, Lanceman Major and Powers. Thank you, Majority Leah. Uh, I have serious concern about intro 1574A, and as a member of the Sanitation Committee, I'm disappointed and I feel that many of the issues have not been appropriately addressed. The redrafted version of this bill was first un unveiled just a few weeks ago, and I, along with a dozen of my colleagues, believe it deserved its own hearing. For many of the smaller private carters, intro 1574A will upend their industry and their business. The least we could do, the least we could have done was to allow them an opportunity to further speak about the many challenges that this bill presents. They fear a mini monopoly system that will run jobs and their family owned businesses into the ground. They fear that there will be job losses during the staggered implementation of the bill. They fear a process that favors larger companies and quashes smaller ones. I have questions about how this bill will impact the city's budget. Other cities that implemented the system ended up with enormous unexpected cost when the waste zone plan was unsuccessful. Will the taxpayers be shelling out more money to support commercial waste zones? I question why the bill's tax reads that up to three carters will be assigned to each zone. Why not just say there will be three assigned? I question why this council is seeking to remove competition in these zones which I believe will result in higher collection costs for smaller businesses across our city. I look at Los Angeles, which implemented a similar system that has caused a large increase for the businesses that are utilize, utilizing these private carters. We as a council should be having a discussion about why the Chambers of Commerce oppose this bill and why the business improvement districts oppose this bill. I want to add that as safety must be our first and top priority, and I believe that most, if not all, of the private carters are in compliance. Finally, I just want to express my deep dissatisfaction with the process by which this new intro 1574A was rushed through without time for a renewed discussion. Another few months of negotiation would be a small price to pay to get it right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. We'll now hear from Councilmembers Lansman, Powers, and then finally Traeger. Thank you. Um, on intro 1574, the fact is that the private carding industry is a rogue industry, and it has been for a very long time. It is rife with workplace safety violations, wage hour violations, and every other abuse of working people that you can think of. How many working people have to die before this city will act. This bill will make workplaces safer, period. And for that reason alone, I would support this legislation. But consider the environmental damage that is done to the city every day. Do we really need 90 different carding companies crisscrossing the city in the most inefficient uh, patterns imaginable, adding to pollution and to noise and to just the general mayhem that exists on our streets, which the speaker's legislation is trying to address. Finally, let me say that having three carding companies compete for business in each zone is not a monopoly. It is the definition of not a monopoly. This legislation has struck a balance to allow for competition, but in a sane and orderly way. And if there's one thing that is lacking in the carding industry today, it is sanity 
and order. Let me just uh, mention another bill I, I want to share a thought on, that's intro 1202, um, Council Member uh, Carlina Rivera's bill regarding uh, uh, harassing and, and harming pigeons. I, I'm just concerned, and I want members to think about for a moment, we are making it a misdemeanor for someone to take, um, uh, for someone to harry a pigeon. Now, that may seem trivial, it may not seem like an important issue, but this council has been in the business the last few years of reducing penalties for low-level offenses, and we should think hard before we make it a penalty up to a year in jail for something that kids or street vendors might find themselves doing Thank you, Council Member in the ordinary Madison. course of their day. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to hear from Council Members Powers, followed by Traeger. Thank you. I'm just going to speak on a few bills here today, but I will try to be quick. Uh, first, I want to join uh, my colleagues in support of the commercial waste zoning proposal sponsored by my colleague, uh, Councilmember Reynoso. I think he has gone through extensive debate and dialogue on this bill and has found a balance between the needs of the city as a whole and the concerns of the impacted industries here. I support him on this bill, and I am one of the districts that has probably the most uh, need around commercial, uh, commercial carting because of representing Midtown Manhattan. I think after my, you know, my conversations with him, I think he has worked diligently on this, and I, again, will praise him for how much engagement he had on this bill, and I will be voting in support of it. Second, I want to thank uh, all, all the folks here today on the street safety, street master plan legislation, which will give us a better vision for the city of New York rather than doing this on an ad hoc basis, looking at different neighborhoods, looking at our whole city, and looking to create an integrated na network. I want to thank the speaker and nearly half the council that supported that bill, including myself. And finally, I ask all of your support on the package of legislation today that's before the council relating to animal rights, including my legislation here today. I think this is a very important day for New York as a leader on these issues and to find a better balance between being a city of commerce and a city that has empathy and supports animal welfare. I would also note I have a resolution that opposes the Trump administration's changes or proposed changes to the Endangered Species Act, which I think I just last stated I'd ask people to sign on to that as well. I think this is a great day. I think this is an important stated meeting, and I am proudly voting in support of all these bills ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Traeger. Thank you, Majority Leader. I wasn't planning on speaking during general orders, but when folks knock the public schools, I, Traeger does have to respond. And I have much respect to Council Member Borelli. Um, I would just ask uh, in his list, in his uh, data that he's collected about the school X, how much fair student funding is that school X short by? Because a school in my district is short by over $900,000, and that's the difference between not having literacy teachers and coaches, guidance counselors, social workers, art programs, music programs to help kids advance. Uh, I'd ask how many full-time social workers the school has, how many full-time counselors the school has. I'd also remind my, my colleagues of the story of Anthony Ramos, a, a, a student that was labeled as underperforming, a student that had difficulty on standardized exams, uh, in, particularly reading exams as well, but yet is one of the top performers of our time on Broadway and on the national, international stage. The last time I checked, you have to read a script to perform on Broadway and memorize information, and he did pretty well. Uh, the, the, the speaker's bill, and I don't want to speak for him on this, but the speaker's bill was born out of a frustration that the public, parents, educators, children, advocates, were shut out of the mayor's initial announcement about specialized schools. Uh, that's, where that was, that's where that came from. Show me where there's been a government-sponsored task force made up of advocates and educators and parents looking at this issue. Even the mayor's own SDAG, who I respect enormously, did not mention at this time anything about specialized schools. So I think the speaker did not prescribe a solution. He prescribed the process that is inclusive of all stakeholders. And we may not even agree with all that, but let's at least agree that we have a major problem and we should involve people at the front lines to help shape the process. And with that, I am within my time and I yield back to the majority leader. Thank you. Thank you. I will now bring it to Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> Before we vote, if I could have quiet in the chambers. Sit down, please. 
Uh, before we go into a vote on all the items on the general order calendar today, I recognize them before, but I want to dedicate my vote here today on this master plan bill, 1557, to some of the people that are with us today, that are here in these chambers. And I want to recognize them again for their incredible courage through unimaginable grief to get us to this moment, to push me, to push the envelope, to continue to press to save lives. I want to dedicate this vote to Debbie Kahn, Harold Kahn, Raul Empuero, Melody Bryant, Jane Martin Lavoud, Mary McNulty, Fabiola Mendieta, and Amy Cohen, all from Families for Safe Streets, and Mark O'Connor and Danny Harris from Transportation Alternatives. And with that, I yield back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. Um, now we will move on to report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 1541B, Specialized High School Task Force. Amend and, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, intro 1750, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 568 and Reso 1147 through preconsidered LU 570 and Reso 1149, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the, of the Committee on Health, intro 870A on page 2 through intro 1570A on page 3, Animal Welfare Package. Proudly amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Preconsidered Reso 1141, Committee Changes. Coupled on General Orders. Preconsidered Reso 1142, Juvenile Justice Committee. Coupled on General Orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management, Intro 1082A through Intro 1574A, Private Carding. Amended and coupled on General Orders. Congratulations, Antonio Reynoso. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1557A, Comprehensive Street Planning. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, Madam Majority Leader, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. What a busy day. Thank you, and congratulations to all my colleagues. Adams. I'm sending prayers and condolences to the family of Amir Griffin, who was sadly and senselessly gunned down in my district. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Request time to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I just want to speak briefly on 1541B, which establishes a task force Councilmember Traeger has indicated some of the matters that need to be considered in regards to uh, our discussion about how schools are performing. But I just want to say that it's been documented that no other city uses one standardized test to decide whether or not students will be admitted to a particular elite school, as we call them. And also, the NAACP brought a case saying that there was no predictive validity associated with this one standardized test. And we know that although black and Latino students represent 70%, they're about 10% of these specialized schools. So I applaud the speaker for saying we need to look at what the conditions are. We need to look at other measures that can be considered in terms of admitting uh, students who are black and Latino, particularly into these so-called specialized schools. There's no other justification to say that they only are 10% in that population when they represent 70% of the uh, entire student body. And with that, I want to say vote aye on all, with the exception of 1425A and 1574A, mainly for the reasons that were laid out by Councilmember Cornegie. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Borelli. Thank you, and permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. 
Thank you. I'll be voting aye on all except uh, intros 1202, 1378, 1425, 1521, 1557. Uh, I want to thank the staff uh, for their work on intro 870, uh, specifically Sarah List, uh, Sarah List, Z Emanuel, and my staffer, Frank Masha. I also wanted to just address uh, some of what my friend and colleague uh, Mark Traeger said. Uh, I think he did a, a good job of identifying some of the, the shortfalls and, uh, and, and funding um, lack and problems associated with middle schools, uh, and that justifies the point of why we need to focus on them. I think uh, the, the example he gave of, of pointing to a person who succeeded despite the shortcomings of middle schools also justifies the need uh, to put the bullseye, uh, so to say, on why uh, middle schools seem to be failing a significant uh, portions of our students. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I, I, just a mistake as well. I, I said 1521, I meant to say 1541. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. I on all except 1082A, 1574A, and 1541B. Thank you. Mario. Uh, no on 1202, 1378, 1425, 1541, 1557, and 1574, I and the rest. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Chin. Joe, thanks. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I first wanted to thank the Finance Committee for supporting the tax exemption at Nicobaca Village. Combating the housing crisis isn't just about creating new affordable housing. It's also about protecting the precious affordable housing stock we already have. In immigrant communities like Two Bridges, we have seen how rising rents, gentrification, and a shrinking pool of affordable places to live have threatened to displace longtime residents. Today, the council will pass a resolution to help preserve the affordability of 1,590 housing units at the Nicobaca Village Complex so that it remains a home for working New Yorkers and seniors on fixed income. Built in 1924, Nicobaca Village has been in desperate need of investment to address its aging infrastructure need. Nevertheless, they should not be put on the backs of low-income tenants. Today, thanks to our work with the tenant, HPD, and DHCR, we have secured a property tax exemption for the next 50 years so that tenants wouldn't have to face substantial high rent increase and can stay in their home. I also wanted to congratulate all my colleagues for passing important legislation today especially to our speaker, to Council Member Barrera, and to Council Member Ronoso on your fight for environmental justice, on that long journey, and you're finally all victorious. So congratulations, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. I'd be excused to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to thank and congratulate uh, Antonio Reynoso for all of your hard work. I'm proud to be a member of the Sanitation Committee, proud to do the work, to, to assist you in the work that's being done today to make our streets safer, to bring sanity uh, to the waste industry, and to finally uh, stand up for workers. So thank you for all the great work that you're doing uh, in this committee and, and ensuring that this bill gets done. And to all the advocates that work so diligently, I congratulate them as well as well to our speaker, Corey Johnson, on 1557 and your great bill. Uh, you know, we need to move into the 22nd century, as you talked about, and that means we need safer streets and streets that are comprehensively designed, uh, not one street at a time, but every, looking at every borough, every street, and making sure we get it right so that we can feel safe crossing the street. Getting milk should not be a dangerous endeavor. So thank you, Speaker Johnson, for your leadership. Uh, I, I vote aye on all with the exception of 1425A, in which I vote no. Thank you. Thank you, and I just want to remind uh, all members that we need to uh, keep a quorum. We have four more resolutions that need to be heard that require our full attention and quorum. Thank you. Carnegie. I'm a no on intro 1378, 1425, 
1574, aye on all the rest. Deutsch. Pass. Drum. Aye. Espinel. Eugene. I would I. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues, and, and thank you for uh, not just being here, but for the incredible legislation that's before this body today. Um, I want to thank the speaker for his leadership on the transportation master plan, which will ultimately create more safer streets for all New Yorkers. Um, I dedicate my vote today on intro 1557A to a dear friend of mine, Marlon Palacios, who was killed on January 9th, 2017, as he was crossing the street to go pick up his son from daycare. He was killed in the crosswalk and died at the scene, and he never made it to pick up his son. And in his honor, I lift up his name. I grew up with him, someone who had so much more to give. But I am thankful for the time I knew him. And in honor of him and so many others that Speaker Johnson mentioned, I certainly will be voting aye on intro 1557A. Uh, I also want to congratulate Councilmember Antonio Reynoso for his tremendously hard work on the commercial waste industry bill and really looking at a delicate balance and trying his very best to make sure that community Communities like mine in the South and West Bronx are treated fairly when you talk about commercial waste, and we are not continuously inundated with city trash all over the city coming to our borough and really looking at reducing truck traffic and making sure that we address a real problem we have in the Bronx, which is asthma. We are inundated with so many young people and families that struggle and face asthma every day. And so I appreciate council members' work as well as all of the advocates. And I certainly want to commend my colleagues who led the way on all of the bills on today's agenda that relate to animal rights and animal safety. I appreciate your relentless efforts and all of your work in making sure that we provide safety for New Yorkers, for people and animals and everyone else. And so with that, I will be voting aye on all and congratulations to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Nye. Pass. Gordon Chick. Um, Madam Leader, your permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, first, I want to uh, congratulate the speaker on 1557A, and I, I do hope that as we go forward, reworking our transportation network, we remember those residents of the city, including all of my constituents, who have few, if any, mass transit options. Um, that has to be part of the solution if we're to get people out of cars and get them into mass transit. And I hope we can build on the work of Councilman Miller and the Atlantic ticket to expand opportunities, um, which would be a true game changer to let people in the furthest parts of our city access the Long Island Railroad and Metro North at a much, much cheaper cost. Um, secondly, um, I am opposing uh, 1574 today, and I think that the goals of the bill are laudable, and I largely agree with them. Um, I know that we can do much better than what uh, the current private car system has in place, and I congratulate my colleague, uh, Tony Renoso on the bill. Um, the bill has tremendous potential and is written and likely passed. They will rein in the worst practices of the carting industry while cutting down on the miles traveled over our streets. My problem with this legislation is that it cuts too far, in my opinion, the number of carters which will be able to serve our communities. As written, there will be 20 new zones created throughout the city under this legislation. And the bill provides for up to three carters per zone, but it certainly doesn't guarantee that. And I believe if it, that's the goal that we wanted, why not? vote that into legislation, as uh, my colleague Chaim Deutsch um, said earlier. Uh, unfortunately, I believe that this bill has a very good chance of creating a monopoly in this city. And as written, it's possible that one carter can control up to 75 percent of the routes in this city. Um, finally, I want to associate myself with Councilmember Ulrich's remarks. What am I supposed to tell my constituents, and what are we all going to tell our constituents when the inevitable complaints arise about Carters and that there is no one else to go to. Um, I'll cut my remarks short, um, Madam Leader, and I vote aye on all except 1425 and 1574.
Thank you. Holden. I on all except for intros 1541, 1557, and 1574. Kalos. I on all. Ku. I on all. Kozlowitz. No, I'm 1425, and I on all others. Lanceman. In an abundance of caution, no on 1202, and yes on all the others. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to the speaker on the Streets Master Plan Bill and thank him for all the work that's gone into it and obviously give my great gratitude to uh, Families for Safe Streets and all the families who are here. The fact that you have turned just grievous loss uh, through extraordinary courage into a city whose streets are safer for every one of our families is just an extraordinary act of generosity and, and courage and we really, really honor it and this bill um, we'll build a city that we all are safer to live in. Um, and, Speaker, I really commend you on it. Um, I also just want to add on, on 1541, for those uh, who would like some data for thinking about um, our specialized high schools and what screening does, I really would invite you to come to District 15. Uh, as many of you know, last year we eliminated the screens that select in the high schools of our district. There's 11 of them, and three of them uh, used screens to essentially have, as a result, more segregated middle schools. This fall, we did away with those screens, and I've been in the middle schools of D15, and they are tremendous places. You would be happy to see what the kids are learning there, how well they're learning together, how ready they are to be in integrated settings, and how effectively those schools and those teachers can deliver high-quality education to all our kids in integrated settings. I really hope you'll come take a look. Something good is happening. Uh, that this task force can build on and that we can all build on if we have the courage to get past some of our fears in how we think about it and take some bold steps forward toward the city that we really want to live in. A vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Levine. Lewis. I on all except 1574A and 1557. Thank you. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I, I already spoke on some of the other bills, but I want to just continue with the frame of thought that Superstorm Sandy really kind of shook us all, and the work that we're doing here in this council is really in response to that. I want to lift up the master plan that the speaker has been fighting for uh, and that we have been joining in supporting a master plan for the streets, safe streets. In my district, we are seeing the laying out of the 4th Avenue bike lane. If you haven't seen it, I welcome you for a bike ride. Uh, come with me. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a street. It's an avenue that I have taken many, many times and that never felt safe. Now it does. This kind of master plan takes something like that one of the longest, if not the longest stretch of protected bike lane and connects it so that I have and that everyone has, including families. Councilmember Reynoso just showed me a photo of his little baby, uh, Alejandro, and, uh, and a balanced bike. And thinking, when, when will he be able to get on the streets and ride with his father who rides a bike, my brother from the north? And those are the kind of questions that our families are asking right now. When is it gonna be okay for us all to get on a bike and be safe? This master plan does that, and I just want to commend the speaker for going up, out so strong without any hesitation whatsoever, and has, has stood strong. I can't wait for more of this, and so I, let's, let's keep going. Let's move forward. Uh, si se puede. I vote aye on all. Miller. I vote aye on all except for 1425, 1557, and 1202. Perkins. Uh, except for 1541 and 1574, I vote aye on all. Powers. I vote aye on all. 
Quiet in the chambers. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Just want to note that my bill is not the only one that's going to be passed here today. I just want to, as a Safe Streets advocate, want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for the great work that he did. And I just want to uh, clarify one point that it was a question asked during uh, the media time. Uh, breaking car culture is not about getting rid of cars. It's about understanding the privilege that it is to have a car and understanding the responsibility of having a vehicle that can kill someone and just the utmost responsibility that you need to have um, in the city of New York. Uh, so just want to make sure people understand it's not about getting rid of your cars. It's about being responsible if you have one and understanding your privilege and our responsibility to build policy around that and understanding those two, those two foundational elements of it. And I will eye on and congratulations to all my colleagues. And I know I make this hard on you guys sometimes. So to all my colleagues, I really, really want to thank you for this vote today. I know it's not easy. And I know that you guys, uh, that, that I put you in tough positions. So again, I vote eye on all. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote briefly. Permission granted. Uh, thank you. I want to join my colleagues at uh, Adrian Adams and Miller and uh, also voicing my um, uh, condolences to Amir Griffin and his family in Southeast Queens, who was uh, unfortunately gunned down senselessly. I also wanted to congratulate Councilmember Reynoso and the coalition. I know this has not been uh, an easy conversation. If it was easy, it would have been done a long time ago. But I think today we are setting a new standard uh, for the private car industry. And really, to sum, to, to sum it up, it speaks to um, ensuring that your zip code doesn't necessarily determine whether you have access to clean air or not. You know, there's been a lot of conversations today about monopolies in the industry, uh, but asthma and environmental injustice has had a monopoly on our communities for decades. And today we are finally taking a step forward to ensure that we can correct that. Uh, this bill is not a magic fix. Uh, I hope that the city and the administration really follows through uh, after this bill is enacted uh, because we pass a lot of pieces of legislation here, but if the will is not there on the administration side uh, to ensure that the mission is fulfilled here, uh, this is just a pipe dream. I also want to congratulate um, the speaker on his bill, and I wanted to just echo uh, Councilmember Grudinchik on his words that you know, there's a lot more investments we also need to see in communities uh, that are transit, transportation deserts as well. But this bill is certainly a major step forward in ensuring that uh, as New York City evolves, that the roadways are open for everyone. And we have to recognize that New York City is growing and changing, and we have an obligation to ensure everyone feels safe uh, who travels our streets. With that being said, I vote aye. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I want to vote aye on all, um, but I want to pay special tribute um, to Harold and Debbie Kahn um, and their son Seth, um, as well as Amy Cohen and her son Sammy, and uh, every family member who has lost a loved one to traffic violence. With that, I vote aye. And to, and to Amy's whole family as well. Thank you. Rivera. With a big thank you to all of the advocates that lead the way for so many amazing pieces of legislation to be passed, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Display my vote. Permission granted. Today is a big day, especially for not only those items that we mentioned related to family for safe streets, to make the streets safe, but also for the animal rights advocates. It, it, and for so many sectors that we are showing today that we care, we want to make a city, a city that is based on social justice. If we talk about animal rights, it's a, so, it's a human right. If we talk about a individual being killed, you know, thousands of people are sent, into, are sent to crit in critical condition to a hospital, dying every week because we don't have safe street. So with this master plan, as we said before, it's about the strategy for the future. It's about leading nationwide the movement that is calling to, to establish city throughout the nation, 
more walkable, more pedestrians, and cycling friendly. But today also we are saying that the city of New York has a responsibility to put the dollars to build more protected bike lane. That 24 protected bike lane that we did it last year and the previous year is not enough. And that's why with this plan, the speaker was able to lead, to negotiate, to be sure that we have a more ambitious plan to increase the numbers of protected bike lane. What we have seen is that more of the infrastructure of bicycle in New York City are only in the wealthy community. They are not in the third community. Yes, look at the map that is three block put it together. There's not infrastructure in the South Bronx. There's not infrastructure in Washington Heights. There's not infrastructure in immigrant and working class community. So I feel that this plan is not only about policy, it's about putting the dollars where we need it. But also, most of the cyclists who are killing the city in York are killed in intersections. So this morning is also calling DOT to say, let's redesign our street, especially the intersection where we are losing most of the cyclists so that they will be safe as pedestrians should be safe too. With that, I will add. Thank you. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye and all with congratulations to the animal rights advocates for their win for the animals. Uh, with congratulations to Councilmember Reynoso for his win for environmental justice. Um, and with, with deep uh, congratulations and appreciation to the speaker for his win for safety of all New Yorkers. Uh, I especially honor the Lerner family and appreciate the dedication of Families for Safe Streets. Thank you. Thank you. Salamanca. I and all except for 1370AA. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, so I want to congratulate all my colleagues uh, for, for their very important pieces of legislation today and also just, you know, credit the speaker uh, with regards to, to, I think, his important bill as someone who uh, represents a district in southern Brooklyn that has seen um, traffic fatalities, that has seen young children killed because of uh, reckless drivers, uh, has seen, we have seen southern Brooklyn uh, bicyclists killed by reckless drivers. Uh, we need to overcome a certain contradiction where sometimes my neighbors, who I deeply respect, say that we are the outer boroughs and we're very disconnected. And here's a plan to increase connectivity to the rest of New York and to make uh, our streets safer for all those who share our streets. I think we have to advance safety, common sense safety measures forward. So I, I, I do support this in the name of safety and also in the name of equity and access for all regions of New York City. And with that, I vote aye on all. Ulrich. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Briefly, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I am voting um, on all of today's agenda with the exception of a few bills, but I just want to uh, speak briefly on the Speaker's Master Plan, intro 1557A. Um, I represent, uh, like many of my colleagues, a transportation desert. And uh, my district has had its own uh, share of fatalities involving cyclists. And uh, we know that there is real carnage on the street and that vision zero does not always work and that the administration has not done enough, quite frankly, to protect everyone who uses the streets in our city. So I first want to commend the speaker for putting forward such a bold and ambitious plan to improve the safety of all New Yorkers who share the road. Uh, the only thing that disappoints me about this particular bill is the lack of a formal process for a meaningful and real community engagement. That when we discuss and when we plan for bus lanes, protected bike lanes, pedestrian plazas, and other uh, things that are desperately needed in every community and in every borough, there is really nothing in the bill except for the public education campaign listed at the very end that speaks to the role of the local community boards, the local elected officials, 
and the local community groups that live in those communities and will be dealing with uh, those uh, additions that will be installed into those communities. And so I would like to see this amended somewhere down the road. Uh, when I said on New York One yesterday that the devil was in the details, that was not meant to trivialize uh, or to show any disrespect for the families of victims uh, of the carnage that's been going on in New York City. Uh, but it's simply to speak to the fact that we need to involve all the stakeholders in a community when we are doing uh, community planning and improving transportation alternatives in our communities. I recently signed a letter of support. I want a protected bike lane on Cross Bay Boulevard between Howard Beach and Broad Channel. We just had a fatality there. That is a good example of communities working with DOT to put in the infrastructure that's desperately needed. Uh, with that said, uh, I'm only going to abstain on 1557A for the reasons I just stated. I'm voting no on 1425A and no on 1574A and I on all others. Thank you very much. Thank you. Valone. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just wanted to remind everyone that our speaker over two years ago started this battle for advocacy for animal rights when we created for the very, very first time in the history of this city in a battle that goes back for many generations that my, my family and my mom always instill, instilled in us, that if you didn't even have an animal shelter, how could you talk about animal rights? And this council unanimously stood together and basically forced the mayor to put that in the budget and create for the first time animal shelters in every borough. And you can't have animal rights unless you have an animal shelter in every borough. And those now are being cited and built due to your leadership. I was proud to co-sponsor those bills with you. And that's part of the legacy of today's bills, that we take the next step to providing the promise that we did from day one for all those who advocated for animals and a voice that was not always heard in this city. And now we can, when we're done, we can say we proudly started that revolution and we'll always continue to fight for those rights, um, for the animals that make such a big difference in every one of our lives, uh, and adopt, adopt, adopt. So I thank you, Speaker, for that and all the council members who continue that fight today. Um, I do wish to advocate for those transportation deserts. I know the Speaker even put in his, uh, in his annual address acknowledging the communities that still do not have a subway like mine, and we border Nassau County, and that's how far away we are from the city, and so it is not a privilege, it is our right that we must drive. So I take homage to some of the comments that were made today about privilege of driving. No, I have no other way of getting into that, into this city. So if someone wants to build that train into my district, we'll be happy to take it. If somebody wants to expand the MTA buses so I can get onto those buses, we'll happily take it. Until that day comes, we will continue to advocate for sharing the streets safely for everyone. So with that, I vote aye on everything. I abstain on 1541B and no on 1557A. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, in particular, congratulations to Councilmember Reynoso, who has been incredibly determined and dogged in his desire to uh, see justice prevail here. And I have a great respect for him. And uh, while there are so many important things we're voting for today, uh, Speaker Johnson's uh, initiative is something that I could not be prouder to vote for. It will save lives. Uh, it is visionary. It is needed and incredibly, incredibly forward thinking. So uh, very, very proud uh, to vote for uh, that in particular, uh, but all of the things on the agenda, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Yeager. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. This, uh, I'm, I rise on intro 1557, um, a very commendable, a very laudable bill, and I congratulate the speaker. He, he put in an, an enormous amount of time, uh, the members of this council who worked very hard to get this uh, to the right place. The goals are laudable. The department shall prioritize and promote the safety of all street users, on-street priority for mass transit, reduction of emissions, access of individuals with, with disabilities. It provides for a plan with X number of uh, protected bike lanes. I think that's a great idea. I don't think the city should ever build a bike lane that isn't a protected bike lane. 
There are too many people being killed in our city. Some of them in my district over the last couple of months, young child a few weeks ago, um, uh, bicyclist on Coney Island Avenue about two, three months ago during the summer. This plan is great because it has great goals, but it has a false metrics of X miles to be done with Y, but it doesn't say that these are the criteria by which we determine where these miles are built. Why not require that every bike lane be protected and that no bike lane which is not protected be built? This plan doesn't do that. Why not establish here by this council how and where and in what form and with actual criteria of need and use lanes ought to be established instead of a blank number of miles per year? It's a blank check. And that means ultimately we're turning over our authority to a couple of bureaucrats, a bunch of bureaucrats, and they're going to decide what to do, where to do it, how to do it, to get to that number, because now it's a magic number. Not a plan for this is what the needs a bike lane, this is what doesn't, this is where it ought to be, this is where it oughtn't. For that reason, I'm going to vote no on 1557. I want to just say, I'm a, I want my child who's a biker, bicyclist, to be safe. I want every child in the city to be safe. I don't believe this bill gets us to that place, and I think it could be better. Thank you. I vote uh, aye on all, uh, Madam President, with the exception, as I said, uh, intro 1557, and also with the exception of intro 1541, 1574, 1202, 1378, 1425. I abstain on resolution 1141, and uh, that's it for now. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. So um, I just want to say, I um, just want to touch upon first uh, in 1557. Uh, there are 7 million um, car, uh, people in New York City that own cars, and I'm proud to say that I'm not one of them. Um, I was a motorist for over 30 years, and I never thought I'll ever use mass transit and give up my vehicle. Um, I live in a district where many or most people rely on their cars. And after giving up my personal vehicle seven months ago, I am now a proud uh, transit rider. I reduced my driving by more than 50%. Our streets, um, especially in southern, in southern Brooklyn, are congested, and many people in my district uh, rely on the vehicles to do carpool, to get the kids to school, uh, to go shopping. And, um, and I, I definitely encourage those who own vehicles, if they could get out of their cars even once a week or once a month to use mass transit and to reinvest that money into our transit system, opposed to using the cars and reduce congestions, congestion on our streets, um, that would be a great opportunity uh, for Southern Brooklyn, in my, in, especially in my district. But um, my concern, um, the intent of the bill is, uh, is amazing, and the speaker worked very hard on, on this master plan. But I, I personally, I don't trust government. I had uh, certain implementations in my district where it's still not done, in, and it's more than a year. And I have no confidence in our administration when it comes to implementing and partnering with community boards and listening to elected officials who know their district best. No, nobody wants to see any crashes, any fatalities anywhere in our city. But if we all work together as one and working on these issues, then I think we could get a lot done. Um, I just uh, got a bike lane in my district that's totally unprotected. It's a shared bike lane with vehicles. I live on a bike lane. I live on an unprotected bike lane. Um, and I'm willing to work, to continue working with the Department of Transportation on plans to connect our, 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 our bicyclists uh, in southern Brooklyn. And um, with that, I'm going to vote no on 1557, no on 1541, uh, no on intro 1574, 379, 1378, and Rezo 798, and I and the rest. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. Again, quiet in the chamber. Espinal. Aye. Joan Aye. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. 
Today we sent a terrible message to our small business owners. While we always discuss the importance that they bring to our city, the tax base and the employment that they are, the message that we've given our small businesses today is we hear you, but again, we'll do what's in your best interest because we know best. Bill 1574, I wholeheartedly believe, will be revisited in the future when we realize we created a monopoly. The entire borough of the Bronx under this bill will be allowed to provide one carter. Decades ago, we removed organized crime successfully from the carting business. What we just did is empowered Wall Street and publicly traded companies to take over the entire carding industry for New York City. It will allow two to possibly three carters to control this entire market, undermining the very existence of our small businesses by putting another burden on them. The same businesses that we always strive to protect, women, minority-owned businesses. And if that wasn't enough, we could have done more by just providing and mandating eco-friendly electric hybrid vehicles be used. We could have given worker protections and mandated that they have all of the protections that are needed to make sure that our workers are protected. It is a sad day for New York City. And I know we're going to regret this day. And I know that this bill will be looked at in the future and revised. I vote no on 1574A, on Resolution 379A, Meatless Mondays. I would support marijuana-less Mondays, cigarette-less Mondays, drug-less Mondays, or any other Monday that would protect the more than sick four people a day that Thank die you. to drug overdoses. Thank I you, abstain Councilman. on 1557. I am part of a lawsuit that challenges the DOT, does not peg cars against motorists and bikes. A Morris Park corridor connects two of the largest investments in New York City. Thank you, Councilmember Jonai. I, I ask to continue briefly. Briefly, but please bring your remarks to a close. 100 businesses on Morris Park Avenue have been undermined with a, a truck delivery zone that only one of those businesses could use, making it impossible for those businesses to survive, undermining again the existence of a commercial corridor. That corridor is going to co connect two Metro North stations. It's going to connect the Morris Park Metro North Station and Parkchester. The community asked that we wait. Let's do a feasibility study before you implement this Vision Zero plan. And DOT's response was, no, we know best. Well, I'm sorry to say, government does not know best. And community input Thank falls you, on deaf Jonah. ears. I also vote. Uh, no on Resolution 798. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Jonai. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. On this historic day, I proudly vote aye on everything on our agenda. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. And I just want to remind the body that we are counting um, all of the votes. It's going to take a moment. So I need everyone to please remain seated. Um, in order for us to remain and to have quorum. Okay, quiet in the chamber. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. 
with the exception of intro 1425A, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative and 11 negative zero abstentions. Intro 1557A, which was adopted by a vote of 35 affirmative, 10 negative, and two abstentions. Intro 1574A was adopted by a vote of 35 in the affirmative, 13 negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1541B, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, seven negative, and one abstentions. Intro 1082A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1202A, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1378A, quiet in the chamber, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions. Resolution 1141, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstentions. The revised land use call-up vote is 48 in the affirmative and zero negative. Thank you all for your patience. We will now go into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion. <laughs> Thank you. Quiet in the chamber. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for being here for this stated meeting. Madam but again, Majority we Leader, have to remind you that we need quiet in the chambers. We need, we need to keep quorum because, as Councilmember Joan I said, we have a meatless Monday's resolution to vote on. That's right. <laughs> we also have four resolutions that need to be discussed today. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's resolutions other than Councilmember Helen Rosenthal? Seeing no other, I now call on Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, and again, quiet in the chamber. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. You know, the phrase meatless Mondays uh, perhaps brings mockery. Um, and uh, so let's talk about the seriousness of what and why Meatless Mondays matters so much, right? The highest cause of death among men and women in the United States is heart disease. The largest cause of heart disease is eating meat. So by taking out one day of the week from eating meat, encouraging people not to eat meat one day of the week. Cardiologists have said this will decrease heart disease by 15%. That's not a joke. Having a plant-based diet. Please continue. I'll wrap it up quickly. But 30% of the um, carbon, monoxide, carbon uh, monoxide released into the air comes from the caring of the millions of uh, animals who we eat. If we move to a plant-based diet, climate change would slow down. That's not a joke. So. As a, a, a very proud plant-based diet eater, I am grateful to my colleagues, grateful to the speaker for voting yes on this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Rosenthal, and congratulations. Do we have any other members that wish to speak? If no other members have signed up to discuss today's resolution, I will now read them on to the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on today's resolution should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. Resolution 379, resolution to recognize Meatless Monday in New York City. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Abstentions. 
The ayes have it. Resolution 798, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign A6298-S4234, 234, an act to amend the agriculture and markets law and the general business law in relation to the sale of dogs, cats, and rabbits. All in favor say aye. Uh, adopt, don't All shop. <laughs> All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 921, resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign A.286, which would provide a tax credit to each taxpayer who adopts a household pet from a shelter. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution calling on the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign H.R. 2724 and S-479, the Preventing Animal Cruelty Torture Act, otherwise known as the PACT Act. And this would be for Resolution 977, known as the PACT Act. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. I see no members on the docket for general discussion, but I would like to recognize today is also the last day of Corey Ortega, the director of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, who will be moving on to Delton Consulting as the VP of Government Relations. He's also gotten married this year and been recognized in 40 under 40. We will miss him at the council, but we know that he will do well in all of his endeavors. Thank you so much to Corey Ortega, and congratulations, it's been a phenomenal year for you. I'll now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close out this meeting. On this historic day for animals, for having safer streets, for totally uh, reorienting how we collect garbage in New York City, on this very, very big historic day, I proudly say that the stated meeting of October 30th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone.